Now, uh, typically, uh, when you are starting out with a, uh, a part that you would like to program, the first step you'd want to do is once you have your stock geometry defined, you'd want to start out with the roughing process in here. So on this particular part, you can see I already have a few operations. Uh, I'm going to uh, quickly uh, go over the roughing toolpath. You already are familiar with it. So if you go under 3-axis or 3-axis advanced, you'll have access to the horizontal roughing toolpath. In this particular step, you'd be basically using a large end mill, a flat mill, or it could be even a corner radius end mill to basically hog all the material out, the excessive material. So you want to basically rough the stock down as far as possible to bring it as close as possible to the finish shape of the part so you can then perform pre-finishing and finishing operations. Now once you program a roughing operation, uh, in this particular case I already have a roughing operation programmed in here, uh, you will notice that the toolpaths have been programmed with a large end mill. So I'm going to go ahead and run my simulation on the roughing operation. And once it's roughed out, since I'm using a fairly large cutter in here, uh, you'll notice that there are several areas where the large cutter was unable to uh, clear or remove material. So when you take a look at the part and uh, the stock here, you can see that there are several areas that were uncut because of the uh, larger tool diameter that was used. So if we try to go back and program a finishing or a pre-finishing operation, there is too much of stock that the finishing operation uh, material has to be removed. So before we program a finishing operation, we could go back and program a re-roughing operation. So the re-roughing operation can be accessed from the three axis advanced menu. Now before you can program a re-roughing operation, you must have a roughing operation program and simulate it. If you have not programmed a roughing operation, and simulated it, you'll be automatically be notified saying that the simulation of the previous operation does not exist. So for example, if I go back and regenerate the roughing operation here, you will see that the roughing operation has been programmed and generated. However, the roughing operation has not been simulated, so an in-process stock would not exist on this particular operation. So when we select horizontal re-roughing, you'll, you'll be notified that the simulation does not exist for the previous operation, so please create one before proceeding. So I'm going to go ahead and simulate this roughing operation. I'll go simulate it all the way to the end. And there is the in-process stock from the roughing operation that's been programmed. We will now go back to 3-axis and select horizontal re-roughing. So the re-roughing operation is typically programmed with a smaller tool uh, from the one that you use for your roughing operation. The specification of your feeds and speeds and currents definition are very similar to how you would define in your roughing operation. Under the cut parameters, you would specify your tolerances for your re-roughing operation. Your stock to leave, so typically uh, you would want to leave a less amount of stock than what you left on the previous step. So I'm going to drop it down to 0.2 millimeters. You can choose your cut pattern in here for your re-roughing operation. Specify your cut level controls. Very similar to what you've noticed in the roughing. And also you can specify any cut level containments. And you can even snap to your 3D model in here to establish your cut level containments. Specify your parameters by engaging retracts and define your advanced cut parameters as well. So I'm going to set my arc fit tolerance to be two times my global tolerance and select generate. So in this process, the re-roughing operation looks at the stock from the previous operation, which is the stock that's being left from the roughing operation to determine your tool paths. It's not looking at the initial stock that was defined. So you can see that it's a very efficient way to rough again with a smaller tool. So you can go back and repeat the re-roughing operations with another set of smaller tools to bring it as close as possible to the uh, you know, finish shape of the part. So you can do multiple levels of re-roughing operations in here. And it takes into account the in-process stock from the previous step. And there's your simulation of the re-roughing operation. And as you can see, it is removing material from the previous step, saving significant amount of time by not cutting air. So this is a very efficient way 
to go back and re-rub from the in-process stock geometry that's left from the previous step. And this can be found under three axis re-rubbing. The, the options for cut parameters, cut levels, engage and retract are all similar to what's available in the horizontal roughing operation. So a couple of things to note here is before we program a re-roughing operation, we must have a roughing operation programmed and simulated. So this could be one of the use cases where you could use re-roughing operation. 